All right, looks like we're up and running. Um, this is part two of my Spanish series. Um, for anybody out there, basically I'm trying to spread my knowledge to you so that you um, can exceed in this language, succeed and exceed other people. Um, so first we're going to be starting off with what is a cognate? Important topic right here. What is a cognate? Well, we have um, a cognate is where you have a word in one language that is derived from a word in another language. The important thing here is, though, they have similar meanings. You do have words um, that sound similar, not the same meaning. Um, like, take Oscar and ostrich. Not the same. Close, but not the same. So, you got to be careful. That's a false cognate is when you have a word from one language, sounds similar to another language, not the same meaning or not a similar meaning. That's a false cognate. Watch out for those. All right, we're going on to a review of the tense. I went over all the important la the tenses in my last video. Everything you really need to know to be able to jump into another country and start speaking the Spanish language. I taught you that in the last video. You might want to check it out. It's got like 14 views, so it's really popular. So you might want to hit it up. Um, but I'm going to go a quick recap of the present tense because I didn't really mention the irregulars. Um, so the irregulars you got to watch out for. You had the C to ZC um, changers, stem changers. A few good examples. Conocer goes to conozco. Obedecer, that means to obey. Obodizco, conducir, conduzco. Those are just a few examples you really got to watch out for. Um, those will smack you in the face if you're not careful. We also have the E to IE stem changers. You have pensar, perder, sentir, and pesar, entender, perder, querer, preferir, sentir. Just a few common examples, um, so watch out for those. Another category is the O to UE. I hate these. I don't know why, I just do. You should too. Uh, poder is one example. That means to be able to. Dormir, that goes to Duermo, dormo, duermo. Yes, that's how you pronounce it. Morir is another one. Um, you got to watch out for those. Padir is that's in the next category. The next category is the e to i. All right, and that's like an example is padir. Um, it goes to pido. So you have the z c to z c, the e to i e, the o to u e, and the e to i. Ooh. Guys, I, uh, I just received a text, probably from my friend Juan. Uh, see, all right. So, okay. Ah, uh, one last thing I want to touch on is the reflexive verbs. Um, didn't talk about these. An example is despertarse. All right, and that means to wake up oneself. This is an action. Um. It kind of falls back on the person saying it, or um, or you can use it in like third person, like um, se despier um, a despierta, because that's also despertar is also a e to i e. So like take for example, se despierta, um, he woke himself up. That's you got to watch out. There's a ton of those. Levantarse, um, like se le, levant no me levanto, I got myself up. Um, so really, watch out for those. That's my only recap for the verbs. We're going to move on to other stuff. If you didn't catch that, watch my last video. That will catch you up. Um, the next thing I want to touch on is the demonstrative adjective and the demonstrative pronoun. The reason I grouped those two together is because really, they're the exact same words. The only thing you got to watch out for is the accents. The demonstrative pro pronoun has accents the demonstrative adjective, none at all. All right, all right. So, one good rule for these demonstrative pronoun. Let's let's just let's just step back for a second and uh, think about what what even is this? All right, that's a good question. The what they are is an example in English is um, this or these, that or those. Um, those are how they translate into English. Um, so in Spanish, you you break them into this and these, which is este, 
estos, that's the masculine form, or esta, estas. Good way to remember this is this and these have t's. So este, estos, esta, estas. Those have t's. Este means this. Um, estos means these. Um, esta means this. Estas means these. Um, now the next one, those, those, that, and those. That's the next part. Ese, esos, um, um, ese, esos, esa, esas. So those mean um, that and those. That is ese or esa, depending, um, masculine or feminine. Um, and and those are esos and esas. Get a little confused. I was just thinking about, you know, this and these have T's. That's the S day. You got to really keep those separate. You can kind of get jumbled because they're all very similar. You really got to keep those straight, though. Here, let me, um, let me actually flash it up there for you guys so you can see uh, what I'm conversing about. All right, so you see, they're just right there, and you can just take a quick peek at them. All right. And the last ones, I kind of think of these as a little separate. You, those are the main ones. You should remember those. There's a few ones you'll use in uh, certain situations. That being akil, akia, akios, akios. That means like like that over there or something. That's kind of like over yonder. Um, I'm not going to touch on those too much. Um, I don't want to get into the, uh, the minute parts of this language quite yet. Maybe my next videos. Um, okay. So let's go on to the pronouns. I'm going to be giving you a comprehensive review of all the pronouns. So if you're new to Spanish, um, I'll try to catch you up. I'll be first on that. I actually brought myself some chips today and uh, some salsa just to keep me in the Spanish, the Spanish vibe as I uh, taught you numbskulls. Mm. Mm. It is solid stuff, huh? I actually um made a salsa myself in my garden, fresh, fresh from my um my field in Mexico. All right, so we're moving on to the pronouns. Now, first, I wanna I wanna go over the possessive. Blah. Um, because those are those are basically I, yeah those are those are pretty rudimentary. Let's go over those first. So, starts off, el mio, la mia, los mios, las mios. All those mean mine. Right across the board. Boom. And all the eyes and every single one of those has an accent. So don't forget that. That's mine. That's when you're just using, that is my lobster. That's when you use that. All right. The next one is yours. And we're going to be, uh, El tuyo, la tuya, los tuyos, las tuyas. No accents, nothing. Spelled just like it sounds. Using a sentence. Um, that is your camel, right? That's your camel. That's a possessive pronoun. The next one is his, hers, theirs, or yours. That's el suyo, la suya, los suyos, and las suya, suyas. All right, those are just straightforward, very straightforward. I'm not going to use that one in a sentence because you should be getting the hang of it by now. All right, the next one is our. Um, el nuestro, la nuestra, los nuestros, las, los, los, los nuestros, las nuestras. Okay, all right. So that means our, that is our sheep, that is our guacamole, right? You have possessive. So that's, that's a little recap. You might want to rewind the video, watch that part again. I went a little fast, um, but I have to keep moving. All right. Now I'm not going to go over next. I'm going to go over the subject pronouns. Really important part of Spanish here. Um, and yo is the first one. That means I. Two is the next one, and that means you. Uh, you said el ella. That's all in the third person singular. L means he. Ella means she. Usted is the formal you. All right. 
Next, we're jumping up straight up to the first person plural. Nuestros, nuestras. That means we. Um, now we're jumping down. Down to the third person plural. And ellos, ellas, ustedes. That means they. Ellos, ellas means they. Ustedes, gotta be careful. That's a formal you. You all. Formal. Um, so, that's how you use that. Now, um, we're going to be transitioning into direct object, indirect object, pronouns. Um, this is, gets a little bit more complex. Might want to take out a pen and paper and jot a few of these down um, as I go through. Direct objects are me, te, lo, la, nos, los, las. So, me obviously means me. Te obviously means you. Lo, la means him, her. Nos means us, and lowest loss means them, or you all. Now, the nice thing about indirect objects is they're actually almost identical, except in the third plural person singular and the third person plural. Instead of lower law in the third person singular, it's lay. In the third person plural, instead of lowest loss, it's lace. All right, so now to use the direct object and indirect objects. The way you use them, I'm not necessarily going to go over a complete sentence structure or whatever. Um, you might want to, you know, you might want to do that in your own time. I'm not, I'm not going to go over that. Um, but there is one rule I want to point out that will completely piss your teacher off if you do this wrong. He might even sing you a song. Uh, if you say, lay la or lay lo, that will not work. You know what? Why not? I have a Spotify right here. Let me play Layla for you really quick. You know what? Layla by Eric Clapton. Let's let's find you a find you a nice version. I just oh shit, we don't want the instrumental, do we? All right, here we go. Oh. So, um, whoa, whoa, snap, almost lost my scarf. Okay, so don't use lay, la when you're making your sentence. Don't, just don't. And then lay, low is the other one you don't use. It's very connected. Um, just think of it as the male version of lay, la. Lay, low, don't use. Instead, instead, use lay, slow or lay, la. I actually did a little bit of extended research on this to, to see why the Spaniards are so picky, um, why, they, why they like that. Um, the reason is actually because it's a tongue twister, according to them. Um, lay low, you can sometimes get jumbled with the words. Lay slaw is much more clear and distinct, so that's why they do that. All right, that's all I have for that part. Next, we're going on to comparative adjectives. Um, comparative adjectives. This is an important part of Spanish, just like anything else I've taught you. Um, the two most important words for this are mas, which means more, and menos, which means less. All right, so how you make a comparative. A comparative is like, let me just give you an example like quick, because uh, I can tell there's some imbeciles in the audience. Okay, Pedro es mas simpatico que Pablo. What does that mean? Translation. Pedro is nicer than Pablo. You're comparing two things. Pedro to Pablo. Spanish people have the same name, basically. It's retarded. Um, so, comparative adjectives. So the way you construct one of these, um, you may have picked it up from the sentence, but I'll break it down for you right now. You use um, mas. This is for the middle section. You have your subject, your verb, just like anything else. And then you use mas um, or menos. I'm going to use mas. In this case, is more... Pick your verb. I'm going to use uh, mejor, um, or that's not a verb, sorry. 
you pick your your adjective. So I'm gonna use mayor. So mas mayor, which means more. Mayor means old. Um, so like older than, more old than. The way you represent then is with k, q u e. So it's all you do is you do mas or menos plus your adjective plus k. As simple as that. Three step process. Three step process. That's all you do. A few common ones that you're gonna be probably run into if you ever use this language. Um, mejor que, peor que, más que, menos que, mejor que, menor que. Um, mejor means better, peor means worse, más, more, menos, less, mejor, um, older, and menos, younger. Gotta watch out for those. Those will um, be come up later for you. All right, that's a little bit a brief summary of comparative adjectives. I don't want to get into in the, all the ins and the outs and all that. Um, I could talk for hours about that one subject, certainly. But we got to move on to ser versus a star. All right, a ser versus a star. A star is used. Well, I know what, why don't we uh, why don't we throw some conjugation out there for you guys? A star, a stoy, a stas, a sta, a stamas, a stan. Don't forget your accents, very important. You have the accents, third person on both sides, and second person um, singular. Don't forget. All right, so a star. That is used with um, location, and that's also okay. to state a condition, um, feelings, bodies, um, or like um, morals. I mean, when you're staying that type of thing. Actually, you know what? Just throw morals out of there. That was a typo. Don't just forget that right now. All right. So when you're staying in a condition like how you feel or something like, I am I am just ill. Okay, that's that is a that is a feeling. Um, that's that's something that has to do with your body. I am extremely hot today. I am extremely good looking today. Okay, those are all a star. Really careful with those. All right, Sarah. Sarah is the other one. Now Sarah is an inherent characteristic. Now, okay, let me, let me back up. You could say me being very handsome is an inherent characteristic. So that one could also be said. That's just not a day-to-day -day thing. That might be something built into my essence of who I am. So that's a, that's a quibbling one, you could per se. But uh, besides that, uh, someone someone has a, a, a slash on their face from getting in a fight with a, with a wolverine on the way to school, that would be more of a star, right? That's a condition. It's not going to stay there forever, hopefully. Probably get hit by another wolverine because they're retarded, but probably not going to be there forever. All right, so ser, that's an inherent characteristic, substance, origin, possession, time, or date. That's all ser. Let me go over that one more time. Ser includes inherent characteristics, substance, origin, possession, time, dates. Now, there's one really nice giveaway for ser. Sometimes in the sentence, you'll have day, something day. Um... I believe that actually comes first, and then ser. When you see day, immediately you can be like, okay, oh no, no, that comes after the verb. So it's like, he is of Macedonia. That's where he's from, right? So immediately, your mind should be like, whoa, 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 what did Richard say? And you'll be like, ser. Ser is what he said, because that has to do with location. That could also do with, um, you know, substance, origin, possession, those type of things. All right, that's ser. Gonna come on to a new section. Um, questions with Sarah and a star. Now I just kind of went over this. This is basically just a slight variation of what I just said. Not really different. Day is in front if origin, right? All right. Make sure to follow Sarah and a star rules when you're forming questions. It's just a question, but you have to follow the same rules we just went over. And then from there you conjugate a star, Sarah. Normally you have no changes. It's not like you're throwing in any wacky stuff. Nope. Straight out. All right, moving on to the personal. Uh, I need some more chips first. Layla, I'm on my knees. Layla, it's a great song, really. Harkens back memories to my younger days. Mm. All right. You know what? While we're having a break. I'm gonna play you guys a song that's going very near to my heart. I'm gonna text Pedro back or whoever it was. I'm gonna play it for you guys. It's a really good song. Oh. Fue la discoteca. 
a ver si me conseguía una fresca. Got myself some rum, cause where I'm from, sometimes you need some. Me tomé mi trago y una princesa pasó por mi lado. La miré con ganas, con esa carita de fama. Ella miró, oh sí, ella pasó, oh no. Ella se volvió como una sonrisa. Tengo que bailar con esta mujer. something from that song, El Tiberon, means shark, don't forget that, I don't know why, you probably could forget that one, but it's a cool word, guys, alright, now we have a nice break, going on to the personal, uh, one last chip, alright, mmm, Personal ah uh, functions as a direct object in sentence goes immediately before person. Um, not used after the verb to near. That's a little vague. I'm actually gonna um, pull out an example for you guys. It's a little bit. It's a little bit tough to grasp. So, for example, Ah Juan trabaja mucho. Just goes right before. Um, goes right before actually. Yes, 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 yes. It goes as, goes immediately before the person. So all Juan trabaja mucho. We use it there. It's function as a direct object. All right. Um, that's um, that's really a sub point. You guys don't really need to know that. Okay. Relative pronoun. Um, K. Okay. This is a good part. But I want to pay attention. This is really useful. The relative pronoun K. I call it the combiner because what it does is you can combine one sentence and attach it to another sentence create a marriage so how it works um take these two sentences for example el joven se llama pablo right pablo tiene un actor combine them together el joven que se llama pablo tiene un actor basically what you do here um is um, you take the one that's a little bit, the sentence that's a little bit most obvious, and you put it before the one that's less obvious. So an English example is like, if you have two sentences like, um, Juan is fat, um, and then like, the young man has a car. And the way you do it is, the young man that has a car, he is fat. Right? That has a car. He is fat. Um, the young man that is named Pablo has a car. Right. A el huaman que se llama Pablo tiene un actor. Um, carro, I guess I'll say instead. Um, the young man that is named Pablo has a car. That's how you do that. Now, um, the next part I'm going to go over is just a little bit of vocab for you guys. Um, quien, anybody know that? Who? Yeah, it's who. Uh, K is what? Donde is where, por qué is why, cuando is when, cuáles is which ones, the quala bear, de donde is from where, como is how, look at this, all these, all these, all these girls just hitting up my phone tonight, oh gosh, mm, Roberta, alright, como is how, cuanto, cuanta, that's how much, cuanto is cuantas, depending on which one it is, how many, qual is which, quienes is who, a donde to where, those are my um. Those are the ones you probably want to remember. I go to Quizlet. Just go to Quizlet. Type in 
Spanish vocab words, go through a couple flashcards, memorize those. Those will those will benefit you. All right, saber versus conocer. Now these are two two verbs that mean close things but different. Saber means to know a fact or how to do something. Conocer means to know someone or to be familiar with someone, something, or somewhere. Let me say it one more time. Saber to know a fact or how to do something. Conocer to know someone or be to, to be familiar with someone, something, somewhere, or some or somewhere. All right. So saber is a bit more concrete. Conocer is more like I know this or this person type. I know this person or this this thing. Saber is like I know a fact. I know how to do something. Right. Personality types. Saber is like the INTJ. Conocer is like the ENTP. Just grasping at straws. All right. Saber. Conjugation might be important. Say, saba, sabe, sobemo, saben. All right. Say is the one that really kind of can throw you off. You gotta be careful with the first person singular. Conocer, like we said before, it's a what type of verb? Yep. C to Z C. Conozco, conoces, conoce, conocimos, conocen. All right. That's all I have for you for that part. Next part, probably my uh, least favorite part. Ustar. Um, it's actually really simple, but so in English, you would just say, take for example, I'm staring at uh, this phone. I would say, I like this phone. In Spanish, you would say, this phone is pleasing to me. Actually, with a Spanish accent, you'd be like, this phone is pleasing to me. Um, yeah. Actually, that's exactly how a Spanish person sounds, if you look it up. Um, so, how do you say is pleasing to me? All you do is you have to use an indirect object before gusta, or whatever form you're using. So in this case, for that, for that is like, if you want to say, I, I like the room, or the room is pleasing to me, me gusta el cuarto. Right? Pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. You just use the indirect object before it. If you want to say something else like, um... Oh, another important point to recognize is gustar, that when you conjugate the verb, it doesn't correspond with the indirect object. It corresponds with the direct, with the thing it's, um, I guess, modifying, the direct object. So, el corto, the room, I said gusta. I'm not using gusto, which is the first person. I'm using the third person. Usually, you would think gusto goes with me, so obviously, that no, not this case. Gusta, third person singular, it goes with el corto, the room. All right? So, me gusta el corto. All right, that's how you do that. The last thing I'm gonna be going over today is commands. Um, all right, so commands. These are these can be complex. I'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible for you guys. I'll make you really simplified. Basically, one the off the bat two affirmative. Very easy. All it is is the third person in that form. That's all it is. Third person singular in that form. So it takes sirar. Affirmative two is sira. Don't forget the i to E D I E stem change. You're just taking the third person in that form. All right, negative two. All you're doing here is add no, and then instead of seras, say race. Right? You change. You you put it in basically the E R format. Um. All right. Now for you stead. For this, you put it in the third person singular. Except switch it from A R to E R. Siri. Don't forget your I E D I E. Um. Now you steadis. You put it in the same format it was before, third person plural, except you change AR to ER, CRN. Now, Sotros, this one, same thing, same form, just AR um, to ER, Cerimos. Now, it's important to note, Sarar is a good example. It's an E to IE stem changer. The stem change applies to all the forms, except for no Sotros, which is exactly how it is when you conjugate it. So, that's important to note. Um, all right, and um, the two affirmative, like I said, works off the third person directly. All the other forms work off the first person. That's important to that's important to realize. Um, right, the third first person singular. Um, all right. Now affirmative commands. If you have any reflexive or object pronouns, you put those at the end of the command. Like, como, como lo, you put at the end. 
And then the last thing is irregular affirmative twos. Desir goes to D, Haser goes to Haz, Ir goes to Ve, Ponir to Pon, Salir to Sa, um, Ser to Se, Tenera to Ten, Venir to Ven. You gotta, you gotta just remember those. Um, and, you know, that's how it works. Um, and, yep, that's how you do those. And that's, that's the end of my video. That's all I have for you guys. I really hope you just really, you know, enjoyed that. I immersed you in some Spanish culture. Try to throw that in there, you know. So let everything I said, everything I just said, just kind of let it, let it soak in. Let it marinate for a while. Um, and go impress your Spanish teacher with my knowledge I threw at you. Alright, like, subscribe, give this video a million views. That's it. I love you guys. I just...